Hey everybody, it's Felisa, and it is a beautiful, rainy Thursday morning. Y'all know how much I love the rain and the weather, and just like, ah, it's just perfect. And unfortunately, somebody around here got to pay these bills, so I have to go to work. Um, but um, I've tried to do this vlog probably about 250 times, no, not that many, <laughs> but several times over the past two or three weeks, and it never comes off the way that I really wanted to. And you know, mostly because I feel like I'm bashing when I say it or when I record it and that's never my intent but since I've tried to record this and get this out for so long I'm completely over it and it's about to get uploaded in its rawest form and just let the chips fall where they may anyway um my disclaimer is that these are my thoughts my ideas my observations in some cases my rants definitely drawn from my experiences it may or may not resonate with you i hope that it does and i hope that we can get some good synergy of conversation around it and even if you disagree i hope that we can civilly engage in conversation and commentary because that's how we all grow we don't always have to agree with each other now do we anyway so um i saw on social media probably about must be about three weeks now a clip of this guy he had gone to Costco's um, you know typical dad typical husband you know looks to be about middle-aged um, and he bought these two two bouquets of flowers so he gets up to the cash register and he said that you know the, the cashier was pretty much you know looking at the flowers and looking at him and it's like mm, uh, you must have done something really wrong to have to buy flowers and so the guy was like no, I just, you know, I love my wife. I love my dog. I want to show them that I love them. I'm just picking up some flowers. And so it was a woman nearby. And so she goes, as we often do. Oh, I wish my husband would so and so and so and so, which is basically the shot heard around the world because every last woman that I have ever known in the history of ever have uttered those words and voiced that sentiment at some point in time. So, um, anyway he gets into the car and he he turns on his 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 uh, recorder and he goes the f off like he is completely going off because he's like basically addressing men not even basically he is addressing men and what he's saying is that you know men need to really step their game up that you all are lazy that you don't invest in your woman that that's ridiculous like how hard is it to buy you know a five ten dollar bouquet of flowers you know how hard is it to buy a card etc etc to let your woman know that you're thinking about her and that you care about her etc etc it's like y'all don't want to do no kind of work no no nothing you want a woman to basically do all the heavy lifting in a relationship so when I tell you that I was here for it, I was here completely for it because a lot of women have that sentiment and I think that this is where the disconnect comes in. Men regard that as nagging. So uh, most women that I know don't like to have to say, babe, could you, honey, why aren't, you know, would you just please, could you just whatever. Part of being a woman, part of being um, feminine, if you will, part of the beauty of womanhood is the fact that we are incubators and we are receptors what that means for you fellas is that whatever it is that you give your woman she will take that she usually will ruminate on it she'll think about it she'll process it and that is going to in turn be given right back to you so if you're not making the investment into your woman and she's running on empty she doesn't have anything to give you I don't know how we got these stories off and I often get into arguments with other women about changing that narrative with men I am not someone that pursues men I do not express interest first you know I'll flirt I'll, you know, I'll let you know that I am open and receptive to whatever it is that you want to do um, in terms of getting together or engagement or whatever, but I'm not somebody that's going to go up and just now start handing out business cards or handing out my phone number or say, here, call me. I don't send drinks at the bar. I don't, you know, I don't do any of those kinds of things because I am a woman and I believe strongly that men hunt, men pursue, men know exactly what they want. They know exactly how to get get it and yeah so that's that's that I'm not coming out against any woman who feels like she needs to do that but what I'm telling you is that my timeline is always full of women who have done all this heavy lifting all of this initial pursuit initial you know whatever in order to get this man and then 
they get them and then they have to continue with that same stuff because that man was never designed to show any interest he never showed you that he could pursue you so now what you crave you can't have because you you acted like you ain't wanted in the first place but i digress once you're in a relationship guys there is a continued investment that you must make in your woman let me say that again there is a continued investment that you must make in your woman and what i don't want to get into on this particular vlog is is it as engaging and exciting and as you know awe-inspiring as the game of whataboutism is you know when we just well, what about women what do they do what i, I really just don't want to play that game on this vlog i really don't i'm just not here for any of those shenanigans Women have their own separate issues, yes. But what I'm trying to impress upon you all is this. If you feel like you're not getting what you need from your woman and she's constantly trying to engage with you and she's constantly trying to press in, she's try constantly trying to connect with you and you continuously avoid making any investment in her, you don't communicate, you don't, you know, you don't, you, you, you don't have any kind of connectivity to her, she is literally dying emotionally and spiritually and that's going to wear on her and that is going to show she's not going to be inclined to continue to do things for you she's not going to be inclined to be concerned about you she's not going to be inclined to to really hold on to that relationship she will begin to retreat and withdraw she won't do it without a fight though she'll continue she'll try for a while you know she'll come after you what's wrong what's going on and here's the thing if you're no longer investing in her if you no longer want her if you no longer desire to be in a relationship with her then tell her that don't play cat and mouse games don't bait and switch her if you were initially somebody who was you know stepping up while you were wooing her while you were pursuing her and you really you know were showing her that that you were going to be invest invested and she in turn reciprocated and she was all excited and then all of a sudden you pull back and you retreat and she's been trying to figure out what's going on with you and you you do nothing you leave her vulnerable for a lot of foolishness i don't happen to be somebody who is I'm not easily persuaded. I'll just say that. So I've never been somebody who, in the context of a relationship, I'm not a cheater. I don't look for outside investments. I don't look for outside, you know, improvements or whatever. I just don't. That's that. I I was married to a serial cheater. I've had my fair share uh, of men who have not been faithful, um, and that's been two, and that's been enough. Damn it. I'm not. <laughs> I'm not at all interested in that aspect of things i think that that's despicable behavior and if y'all know anything about me that is an immediate deal breaker but having said all of that i do know that there are women who become vulnerable to the attention of men because they don't get it they're not getting anything from the man that they actually love and so you know the work husband or you know the mechanic at the shop or you know whoever is paying attention to your woman in such in a way that you should be paying attention to her and now she's like a, a she's like a flipping dehydrated <laughs> somebody dehydrated in the desert because somebody said something nice to her or somebody actually told her good morning or somebody actually is listening to her and she you know she's talking and they're acting like they, they might be actually interested in what she's saying and so she'll find herself in a position where those things she's craving those things she didn't even realize that she was craving it until she got it so guys this is what I'm gonna suggest to you just a couple of takeaways take inventory of your relationship right now look at the woman that you're with number one if this is not somebody that you want to continue to be with have the hard conversation don't be a coward don't just bow out and ghost and give the silent treatment and hope that she goes away like that's some nonsense and if y'all doing that mess y'all really need to stop i said that on another video y'all really need to stop that that is ridiculous it's disgusting behavior and when you do that like you are really being juvenile and nobody can respect you for that like have the conversation that you need to have even if she's gonna be mad you can't avoid emotion you can't avoid 
you can't avoid responsibility and accountability, particularly in the context of a relationship. Say what you need to say, be respectful, say it in love, and then move the hell on. Let that woman go on and find somebody that's going to love her and treat her well. That's number one. Number two, if you decide that you want to be in a relationship with this woman, because if this relationship is one that has been built upon your your investment and your you know your particular structure or whatever then you you owe it to her to at least look and say all right where am i deficient where am i falling short because i promise you that she's doing that she's done that she's trying to figure out how can i make it better for him how can i how can i reconnect how can i do some things for him but if you're not receptive to it and that's not what you want and you can't tell her what you, what you want, then stop expecting for her to be a mind reader and stop acting like she's getting on your nerves when she continuously asks. She's asking because she wants to remain plugged in and she's trying, but she cannot be a team of one. Then number three, you need to figure out what it is that you did in order to get her in the first place and do those things. Like, just do those things. Like that guy said, you know, buying a bouquet of flowers is not that hard. Most of us have disposable income that we piss away at any given moment. I just spent $6 or something on a Frappuccino at Starbucks yesterday. It was flipping delicious, too. Lord, how mercy was so good. But anyway, um, yeah, so I spent $6 on a pumpkin spice Frappuccino yesterday at Starbucks. A, a nice bouquet of flowers at Trader Joe's will run you about six bucks, seven bucks. You know, it, here we have a farmer's market that you can go and get flowers from. If your woman is somebody that enjoys flowers, when was the last time you bought her flowers and she didn't ask you to? When was the last time that you sent her a good morning text? When was the last time that you wrote her a little note? You know, does anybody even use pen and paper anymore? That you bought her a card, that you told her thank you for all the things that she's tried to do for you, even when she acted crazy. When was the last time that you just planned something spontaneous? Does she have to plan all your dates? If she if she don't plan the dates, do y'all go out? If you don't, if she don't tell you that she want to go out, do you think about taking her out? Do you? It, you know, so little things, little investments. If 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 you see that she's struggling, when was the last time you offered to do anything for her? Pay a bill, give her money for a manicure, pedicure, you know, tell her, hey, babe, here, go have a facial on me. When was the last time you did any of those things? A lot of times men are very selfish with their time and with their money. And if that's the case, then you are no longer invested in that woman. And again, like, and let me make sure that I'm consistent. I have said that I have no expectations of boyfriends. I really don't because I think that the expectations get you into a whole bunch of trouble. But I do have a standard. I do have a, a, a certain rule of engagement with me. So while I don't expect boyfriends to mow let grass, pay bills, you know, I don't expect for them to, you know, to, to ice me out or, you know, whatever. I think that that's husband behavior. It's welcomed and appreciated and you get extra check marks. And I will be looking at you as husband material if you do those things for me. But more than likely, I'm looking at your consistency. I'm looking at your effort. I'm looking at your investment into me as a woman, your emotional care. Do you protect me? Do you provide for me? Not necessarily financially, but do you provide a certain stability for me? Can I depend on you? Can I, you know, if I, if something happens, can I call you and you can make a way for me? I'm not a damsel in distress. So if that happens, I need to know that you got me. And if, if, if I don't believe that, then we have a problem. Anyway, I thought that I would come and, you know, kind of touch upon that because I did think that his rant was spot on. And I'm glad that a man said it because when we say it, we sound, you know, whatever. But I want to hear y'all thoughts. You know, like, what do you think about that? How do you feel about that? Um, you know, in a, in a perfect world, men and women would be giving and taking equally. But we all know that at any given time, one is giving more than the other. One is taking more than the other. In a good relationship, in a balanced relationship, those dynamics should shift.
ever so often so that one person is not always in the position of giving and one person is not always in the position of receiving because now that is a parent-child relationship that's no longer equal footing in a relationship. I don't know. Dating is hard. Navigating dating is even harder. <laughs> I'm Felisa. I hope that you all will have a beautiful day. Enjoy your Thursday and I will talk to y'all later on.